Keep an eye on Stefan Bridle from the back of the grid. We believe he is going to try Honda's Kenny Roberts. The last time a Yamaha rider won the opening three Grand Prix of a Premier Classic. On the way. The warm-up lap on a very warm circuit. The new generation in MotoGP with Fabio Quattararo. Here we go. We've just said it. The Battle of Brno. We're all set for it. Wish a bumpy ride for those men on your screens right now. This Brno sir, treacherously bumpy over the last two or three. What a shock he sprang yesterday. Chapter one, we saw the champion down and out. Chapter two. Third chapter in Czech Republic. Lights out here in MotoGP. What a start from Alicia Spargo from the second row. Fabio Quattararo's mate Franco Morbidelli. It will be the whole shot for the Frenchman. Alicia Spargo goes through in third. Quattararo's wide though. Through goes Morbidelli. It's a pole that Joan Zarco was looking for. He's been swallowed up now as well by Paul Spargo. Alicia Spargo on the factory of Brilia in the top three. On. We're just looking at Jack Miller there. He's made a good start. We'll keep our eyes on Dobby as we go. As Alicia Spargo now charges up the inside of Fabio Quattararo. Can he hold on? You used to see in the Aprilia RSG mixing it with the big boys at the front Valentino Rossi did not get a good look already getting his head down already nearly half a second clear of a later Spargaro well this there is Valentino Rossi then with Danilo Petrucci just up ahead of him Nakagami's really getting busy he's made up a bunch of very often Woody just three times and there he is down in sixth place Davizioso's recovered a couple of spots he's come through sector oh, championship winning year in Moto2 he's eight tenths of a second clear already on this opening lap there are the two the Spanish hero still riding back and bruised after that horrible crash he had in qualifying at the season opener 11th he started he's got a gigantic lead already over Alicia Spargaro on the Aprilia and Quattararo here is Joe Antarco then he goes wide into the first corner no second invitation required for Fabio Quattararo the Frenchman streak straight as he looks to find a way through on his brother Brad Binder is he trying to hang it around the outside he is of his teammate look at the number 32 oh. Yeah, Binder roughed up Paul Espargo there a little bit, didn't he, as well? And that's allowed. Joan Zarco threw the gloves off. He's a fighter, he's a scrapper, and that's exactly what he's doing here on lap two. Brad Binder might be. I'm going to make another mistake. Friendly fire from him last time, and another bit there on his teammate, Paul Espargo. Quattararo, Alasia Spargo still hanging on there in the top three. He's coming under real pressure though from Binder, who's dive bombing him from ways back on through. Great battle this for third. Here he comes again. Brad Binder up the inside. <laughs> he retakes Thunder up into third place. Zarco's regrouped and got himself back into fifth. Polis Spargo has quickly retaken that later so far. And somebody we have not mentioned at all, Maverick Vinales, started fifth, eighth. Another shocking first lap for the start for Cal Crutchlow. He's down in 19th place, so he's lost seven places in the opening couple of laps only because Miller's down in 16th place here comes Joe Antarco trying to put a move on Alicia Spargro who's just finding it a bit especially for Alicia Spargro what he's lacking is what he needs most around this horsepower Renault circuit and that is engine performance the wrong way at the moment is Alish. he's going to try and back, bite back though here we go Paul and Alish love each other so much <laughs> but they don't really care when the visor comes down Pit Byra looking on the rookie at the moment Davizioso's clawed his way up into 12th, but he's 4.6 seconds behind the race leader. All can keep it all together because he's just showing what he's got here. The future is so bright for that South Africa. Can you imagine as well, Shmoto GP race. The kid's got skills. Into the last couple of turns then. Let's see where the gap is. It looks like and the Yamaha on the straight. Is Binder going to have a poke at the, at the World Championship leader into turn one? No. These two have had a few. Binder around this 5.4 kilometre Bruno circuit. He's just fighting a 157.445 by the Monster Energy Yamaha riders. Vinyal is still eighth. Rossi still ninth. And Dovi is still behind his teammate Petrucci in 12th. In Europe right now because their rookie sensation, Brad Binder. How long will he be able to keep this pace? He hasn't got the experience of I'm basically just gonna get out there, go as fast as I can, and then suck it and see. There's Valentino Rossi. He's got through on that place. He's currently harassing the Aprilia ride of Alicia Spargaro in the fight for six. Yeah, well for Ducati, and he's under real pressure here from his former KTM teammate Polis Spargaro. He said he was hoping to battle for the top. Paul's just got to be patient here. He's got the pace to be able to contend for the podium, but it doesn't need to be done. I mean, and Binder, having got quickly onto Fabio Quattararo's rear tyre, has not been close enough as yet. Oh, Spargaro trying to go inside, outside. That is a nightmare. Juan Mir, so much hope that he might be able to fight for a podium. Qualifying poorly. Joan Zarco, but he's immediately surrendered that place back. So Juan Mir, that's his second DNF in the first three Grand Prix. For Fabio Quattararo. Just 
incredible for an instant with Lekawona and Mia. Oh, it was Lekawona, not Oliveira. Sorry, apologies to Fortune's hope for his sake. He sees the chequered flag, given the almighty roasting he got from Herve Poncheral. Quattarara at the moment has not been able to... Palaspargo tries again at turn three, tried this on the last lap and then couldn't make it stick. Has he finally got a one as well? Palaspargo, since KTM started in MotoGP 2017, has kind of been their golden boy. They didn't want to lose him to Repsol Honda next. There's no problem at all for Franco Morbidelli. He's still 1.1 seconds clear. In the background there, Rat will be a bit nervous about what's to come here because not only is his rookie in third, but Polis Bargro's closed out, but in a moment, Pip Byra is gonna be looking at his men, scuffling it out for a podium place on that 2019 Ducati. Yeah, and he's got nothing to worry about. Alex Rins is over 2.7 sex. Still nowhere near 100% fit. And what he's doing on that Suzuki is truly remarkable. Behind his teammate, Franco Morbidelli, with the two hungry, Red Bull KTM's behind because Espargaro is coming and he's coming fast. He's taking chunks. Rins, outstanding work in sixth. He's got past Alicia Espargaro and he's broken him as well. It's now the turn of Valentino Rossi. It's as big as it's been. 1.4 seconds now. Morbidelli of 58.4, just a fraction of a three. He, he is. is, you know, he's he going is. for it up the inside of the world. Championship. Hello. He's done it. Wow. What a move by Binder. Hunt as well. Brad Binder then up into second. Now, can he break away from Fabio Quattararo? I'm wondering, able to run the same pace as Franco Morbidelli all weekend. Quattararo, the meat in a Red Bull KTM sandwich. And Quattararo's got bigger problems to worry about as well because Polis Fargo and Joan Zarco are all over his rear tyre now as well. Without the big mistake at the first oh, corner. Oh, his, his two KTMs on the podium right now. Fabio's in trouble. Might have run into a spot of bobber here. And all of a sudden, we so have got two Red Bull KTMs so ahead of Zarco. It's getting a bit twitchy and impatient again, isn't he, Paul Espargaro? And Joanne Zarco now wants to move through on him and he's going to have a look up into time. Wide again. He is wide again. He's got to keep calm, cool and collected. Oh, oh he's, he's down. Down, down! Believe it. Was there contact between him and Joanne Zarco? He's got his arms it's up wondering what's happened. There was definitely a no. Paul Espargaro. Was there contact here? Yes. Oh dear. It's happened repeatedly like this in different classes. As you said, you can't quite see. You've got to go for the gap. But Zarko blitzing by Quattararo. Quattararo's having grip problems here, big style. And Zarko threw at turn. We will just say, I know what you guys are saying. I just didn't see him. I was leaning over to the right. That's, I know exactly what he's going to say. 8-6 from Binder. The lap time's not even close. Six tenths quicker was the number 33. He's got right now a multi good early birthday this present. This would be some birthday present. Viewers of South Africa, you are witnessing. So South African fans have got any voice left at the end of this Grand Prix. Well, good luck. There's going to be a few of them right now booking the uh, Franco Morbidelli. It's not when, it's if. Can he keep his powder dry though, Brad? <laughs> and it's coming now, up the inside he goes. The rookie, Brad Binder, on the Red Bull KT. Brilliant in Bruno, this is incredible. And straight away, two or three bite lengths, he eeks out on Morbidelli's yet. Well, he's won Grand Prix in Moto3 for Red Bull KTM. He's won a Zarco. I know exactly what he's gonna say post-race, so he's got the long lap penalty. That's his victory hopes gone. Is Brad Tenchel MotoGP winner for that camp? Incredible. He's pulling away. Binder's blitzing Morbidelli already. And Zarco, long lap penalty. Is that going to drop him back to Quattarari? Might just about get away with it. Down the hill, into turn five we go. Do you know what? He might just have... He was just talking there to uh, Erta official Rick Crichton. Done it. Well, it's close, isn't it? I mean, full marks what? for his effort. Full marks for his I'm effort. I'm not being funny, but he was ridiculous by Zarco. <laughs> me, me. By the way, Rins is still riding in fifth. Valentino's closing on him. Miguel Oliveira's in seventh. And then it's a... Is the fact that he was actually coming back to Franco Morvedelli quite quickly. That's a very angry... I thought he'd seen the back of Joanne Zarco at KTM last year. And then he gets whacked and then out of the race. Talk about bittersweet. This in the long lap penalty. Does he stay on the right side? Look, he's got his knee down in the long lap penalty. Watch this part here. Watch how dirty the track is. That right. is precision. I mean, perhaps he deserves the podium just for that. Oh, it's rear tight. It's just not hooking up at all. This Coming is, out of that turn 12. This is the point in the race, Matt, that Fabio... Uh, Frank.
Can he hold on to third? Or once these guys get past Fabio, will they be able to close in on? Here we go. Here comes Rins up the inside of Fabio Quattararo. He's made it stick, has he? But here comes Fabio. Simon. Guys, I just wanted to say, can you imagine a year ago that we'd be saying um, a Kato on an Avintia Ducati potentially getting to... And here goes Rossi, two yeah. on the world championship Quattro leader. Quattro is just like a sitting duck right now. And he said as well, what they've done this year, both mechanically and electronically, they figured out a way to get... Is he about to take KTM's first drive MotoGP podium as Miguel Oliveira does eventually make quite light work of Fabio Quattro. This is I saw his grip deteriorate and he dropped back into the clutches of Jack Miller and lost the podium really late on. Fast forward, to but anything goes here. You can just see Zarco, he's just got no rear grip. I mean, he's barely getting his. Look how quickly Zarco stood that bike up on the fat pile of tyre to try and get some drive grip and traction out of turn number. Surely will go all in because he can smell, he can sniff the podium. That would be the podium of his life, but nothing would take the headlines away from what we could be witnessing here is a long last lap for Joan Zarco as well because he's clinging on look at Tech Sky the team. the team I mean they've had some he is about five kilometers away from a truly remarkable achievement in MotoGP history will be winning MotoGP races they've won everything in two wheels off-road road racing and now so comfortable so easy what a hero Brad Binder has been for KTM. Band on it, why as a X rider I admire him so much. It's not at his just his skill. He leaves nothing in the closet. He puts everything out there. And uh, it just goes to show if you do that, yeah. But it doesn't end there. Here's Alex Rins going to poach the podium here from Joanne Zarco in the closing stages. Zarco's got no possible. He's got the horsepower on the Ducati. But this is for the podium. What a podium it would be for Alex Rins. You can just see how he's got a couple of chances left, hasn't he? It's going to be have to be done, surely. Over at Tether. Look at you, beauty. A blazing victory for Binder. A new star is born. Franco Morbidelli. What a ride. What a race. What a performance by the South African Brad Binder. Duke podium in third place. That's the first time that team has had a podium finish in MotoGP. Have you ever seen anything? Is going to be flying at the top of a MotoGP podium from Brad Binder two weeks ago. Oliveira, by the way, a, a brilliant sixth. There's going to be some major, oh. major, literally demolished and destroyed the established elite.